The follow up to uh, Oblivion, this latest game in the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, Oblivion was 2006 game of the year. It's a go wherever you want, do whatever you want, huge open world role playing game. So we really tried to sort of make it so you can just pick up the controller and play. You know, you, uh, what you put in your right hand, the right trigger does that, and your left, left trigger does what you put in your left hand. So we really wanted to sort of make it like you can just pick up the game and play. And what you do in the game is how your character becomes in the world. So if you want to play like a straight uh, warrior with just a, sh a shield and a sword, you can do that. If you use a lot of magic, you know, you're sort of, your skills will go up in that way and you'll be more of a, a magical character. So it's really just how you play defines your character as you go through the game. You know, we worked on the user interface is much much easier to, uh, to understand. We wanted to get away from spreadsheets and stats and sort of let you see all the objects in the world and uh, just really you know, get immersed in the world and not worry about what you're doing to play the game, but just play the game. We have an auto animation system. We're using uh, Havoc Behavior, so we have uh, the you know, new animations make it more immersive. Uh, we improved third person, so you can play in third person. It's primarily a first person game, but a lot of people like to play in, in third person, so we, we improved that, uh, making the user interface much easier to understand you know, where you're going in the game, what you're doing. Uh, and then also with our Radiant Story, it allows us to sort of tailor the game as you play through it. So if there's parts of the game you haven't seen or dungeons you haven't gone to or quests you haven't done, the game keeps track of this and it'll sort of tailor the experience for you as you play through to you know, just take this huge open world and make it more of a, a, a cohesive game. You know, basically, uh, dragons haven't been in the Elder Scrolls games until now. They're, they're, they're back in this game, and they're really a key part of the world and the story itself. Uh, the player, you know, you start the game as a prisoner, uh, and you're about to be executed, and um, so basically you're, you find out you're dragonborn, you're special. You can actually speak the language of the dragons, the shouts or the voice, and so you come into this world where dragons have returned, and you're sort of a central character trying to help. You know, you, you can make a difference and help get rid of the dragons. So they play not only in the world, they're totally unscripted, they do their own thing, but also, they're a key part of the story as you go through the game. How do you, you know, wire dragons back and what do you need to do to help banish them? I mean, like with all those Scrolls games, we sort of want you to uh, do, you know, play as you want, be who you want, and the world reacts around you. So it's just more of an evolution of that. Uh, one thing we've done is a lot of the NPCs in the world, they, they all have like their own, their own schedules, their own, their own jobs. They, they can work the lumber mill, they can you know, uh, chop wood. You can also do these things. If you want, you could sabotage the lumber mill and that'll affect the economy. And then the world just reacts to you as you play. Um, we have five cities in the game this time, so we're able to focus a little bit more on each, each city having its own sort of feel, its own unique uh, culture, and you know, much more rugged and, and uh, brutal world than Oblivion. There's a main quest you can play through, it's about 25 or 30 hours, and then there's, uh, we have over 150 dungeons, just for where random, random dungeons and places you can go, and then we also have the faction line, so we've said uh, here at E3 we're talking about the, the Mage's Guild is back, uh, the Companion's Guild, which is the Fighter, and also the Thieves' Guild. So we have those, those faction lines you can do, as well as the main quest, or you can just go off and play however you want, and it all sort of reacts to how you play, but it's all available to you. So we have the perk system too, one of the things we carried over from Fallout 3 where every level when you level up you can pick a perk for your character. So that's another way, another way you can sort of define your character. You can pick a perk to you know, sort of enhance your blocking spell. One of the cool perks is when you block it will actually slow time. If you do a, a power block it will slow time and give you an advantage on the NPC. Or you get perks that will slow the world down when you zoom in with your arrow. So there's like there's over 230 perks currently. So every level you level up, you get a new perk. So it really allows you to define you know, what character you want to play, how you want to play, and it opens up all sorts of possibilities as you play through. You can dual wield swords. So actually, you can dual wield any, any one-handed weapon in the game. So there's a lot of cool uh, things that will come from that as well. And then we have the, the finishing moves. So some of the battles will end with a really cool finishing move. Really violent and you know, makes you feel like you really kick somebody's ass. So yeah, so it's uh, you know, Elder Scrolls game, open world, go where you want, be what you want, do what you want. Uh, Return of Dragons to the, to the Elder Scrolls series, which is a big thing. Uh, it's coming out on PC, PS3, and 360 on 11.11.11. 11, 11.